end poverty and hunger by 2030. The UN's 17 Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, are premised on strategies that build economic growth to address a range of social needs, including education, health, social protection, and job opportunities, while tackling climate change and environmental protection. Tax revenue is therefore viewed as the main enabler for achieving these goals. Recently, for the first time, Nigeria played host to the biggest continental association of all tax authorities and their global partners, the African Tax Administration Forum, ATAF 2017. ATAF is a platform to improve the performance of tax administration in Africa. Better tax administration will enhance economic growth, increase accountability of the state to its citizens, and more effectively mobilize domestic resources. The third International Conference on Tax in Africa, ICTA, in Abuja, Nigeria, received the blessings of the government and good people of Nigeria. His Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, San, GCON, graced the occasion. The flagship conference of the African Tax Administration Forum has as its theme, Building Strong Domestic Tax Regimes in Africa, strengthening that PIT and CIT. The Vice President noted that the continent also needs to ensure transparency and information sharing among member states. He explained that information sharing involves establishing automatic information exchange as the new global standard for cooperation in tax matters and ending legal secrecy of ownership of companies and trusts, especially those based in tax havens. According to Shibajo, the challenges ranging from poor domestic resources mobilization, differences between what is collected and what could have been collected, poor technology, tax exemption, tax evasion, tax avoidance, poor tax planning and transfer mix planning are part of the unwanted enemies surrounding the formal tax administration. As an example of uh, taking these sorts of initiatives, and this has been mentioned by both the Honourable Minister and the Chairman of IFRS. We recently in Nigeria launched a Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme, VAIDS for short, backed by an executive order to provide an opportunity for taxpayers who are in default under all relevant statutes to within 90 days voluntarily declare their assets and income and pay taxes on them while being forgiven payment of interest and penalties. Although the scheme targets local tax evasion, we're also interested in the large number of Nigerians who own property abroad and who have not been paying taxes on incomes from these assets. The British government's initiative on transparency in beneficial ownership of properties we expect will greatly assist this drive. I think it's important to emphasize that almost across Africa, Tax administrators are actively engaged in extensive reforms and battling resource difficulties that hamper these reforms. The issues of collection uh, of tax and the appropriate technologies that could bring down these costs, developing relevant skills and management needed to effectively create and run efficient and transparent tax administrations, issues around institutional structure, the wisdom of ensuring autonomy of institutions of tax administration have stretched the creativity and resourcefulness of tax administrators across the continent. In this regard, ATAF, the Africa Tax Administration Forum, is a platform to improve the performance of tax administration in Africa. Better tax administration will enhance economic growth increase accountability of the state to its citizens, and more effectively mobilize domestic resources. The conference deeply focused on specific domestic taxes, including VAT, personal income tax, PIT, and corporate income tax, CIT, due to their potential contribution and the underlying risks that are likely to undermine the revenue take. ATAF 2017 was designed along expert panel discussion sessions and presentations. The ICTA 2017 spanned through technical challenges, successes and good practice in the administration of that in Africa. 
enhancing performance of PIT through broadening the tax base, sanitizing the taxpayer register, and improved taxpayer experience with regard to managing compliance. Dealing with complexities of CIT, taking into account the filing of corporate tax returns, enhanced customer service delivery, corporate structures vis-a-vis -vis tax planning, tax audits and investigation. This session, honorably chaired by Mrs. Kemi Adyoshu, Nigeria's Minister of Finance, seeks to open new grounds in boosting revenues in Africa amidst sluggish economic growth, macroeconomic growth and Agenda 2063. This panel sees progress in collecting additional revenue through core taxes rather than those of yesteryear's stereotype reforms agenda process. The only thing that can boost growth, the fiscal lever that can boost growth right now is tax and revenue mobilization. How will that have support us to achieve this? And so one of the big things we introduce in the change in, in transfer pricing legislation is to shift back the onus of proof to the company and therefore in the absence of that the revenue authority can make assumption and make an assessment it brings immediate revenue in secondly ATAP has developed a transfer pricing risk assessment tool you were talking about private companies charging lots of money similar tools to this sells for 250 million dollars and there are companies going around Africa selling them ATAP has developed with some of our own experts a transfer pricing risk assessment tool that is currently being used in Nigeria and four other countries. And uh, we are in the process of copywriting and patenting it, but this will be freely available to ATAP members in Africa. So I think we've got to bring tax back into the African vocabulary in every language, you know, and make it part of our vocabulary. We've got to teach our children from when they come out of school to understand that the day you become economically active, you have a civic obligation to your nation to contribute. And I think when we begin to rebuild those principles and as we rebuild our traditional families, because that's the way African families work, everybody comes together and we have a problem. That's all the tax system has done. It's a coming together and everybody paying their fair share. So I think we've got to raise the debate and I think we've got to be unafraid of the temporary unpopularity as we raise this narrative that Africa will grow, Africa will develop when we can have well-administered, well-designed, as, as we've heard today, and well-executed tax systems. Earlier in his welcome address, Watt had declared, and we quote, This year's International Conference on Tax in Africa, ICTA, is special for ATAF because it is being held in Abuja. Abuja is not just the capital of Nigeria, but an economic powerhouse in Africa. It is also home to the chairman of the board of ATAF, Mr. Williams Babatunde Fowler, who also is the executive chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, Nigeria. Worthy of note as well is the fact that Mr. Fowler is now one of the African experts recently elected to the prestigious UN Committee of Experts on International Cooperation in Tax Matters. And this is a huge honor for ATAF, for Nigeria, for Africa, and a testimony to the success of our common mission to transform and enhance tax administration at a global level. End of quote. I feel very delighted and one has to realize the importance of this issue. I mean to take a Commissioner General out of his country or a revenue officer off his seat for close to one week means a lot. So that means the heads of government, the principals understood the importance of it and let them come and Nigeria being the host and I'll say Nigeria being the chair of the association, I think it's, it's a privilege and a pride to Nigeria. Personal income tax derived from individuals such as employee payee, other withholding tax schemes, and high net worth individuals, HNWI, are also key contributors to domestic revenue. Enhancing performance of personal income tax on the continent as a core tax distribution income in pursuit of national priorities.
brings the matter to areas of quick yet sustainable wins. This session is therefore chaired by no other personality than the Executive Chairman of FIRS and same position in ATAF, Mr. Tunde Fowler. That so-called informal sector that is difficult to catch, difficult to charge, because in most democracies, what the, our politicians always remember, and one thing about politicians is that if you're in office for four years, four years is a very short time. So when they're campaigning, in Africa especially, they don't talk about tax. They don't say, we're going to raise your tax. They don't hardly mention it, because the informal sector will contribute at least 67% or 70% of the votes to get them elected. When I was growing up, people used to pay poll's tax. And there was a period when the tax collectors would come and those who have not paid poll tax would go into hiding. And so in Uganda at that time, if you called somebody in the village a tax uh, evader, basically it was an insult, an insult. People would fight over it. If, if somebody is called a tax evader, it means, you know, you are useless. You cannot even, you know. In Rwanda at that time, if you saw somebody coming very well dressed, and they would ask, who is that man coming? They would say, well, that one, he's a very important smuggler. And that was kind of acceptable at that time. This was in the, in the 70s, in the you know, late 60s, early 70s. And it's amazing to see how things have changed over the years. And then let me throw it open for questions or comments. And then there's a gentleman in front here. My name is Samuel Ozebe from Anna. You know, even in the Bible time, the taxman has got a very bad name. And then, also it's happening even in current time. Now, if you hear about taxman, you start running. No matter how you make this, even simple, uh, people will say, uh, we don't trust what they are saying. They want to get at us. But that... Uh, uh, notwithstanding, the Hillary Bilu has a lot of a job to do in terms of uh, information, particularly to the informal sector, because that's where we have problems. And, and then keeping down the costs of compliance, if, if you are in the informal sector, uh, costs of complying are obviously going to be another critical issue to so simplified requirements for, for record keeping can, can help with this issue. Um, and, and I see that in Nigeria, you've just introduced a system called iShare, um, which, which will help to cut the cost of, of compliance for, for individuals. Um, and, and also, I saw that you have an incentive uh, where you're saying to people that you can file your tax return at your nearest tax. He also spoke about the number of taxes, the multiplicity of taxes. As long as money is coming out of the pockets of someone, they honestly don't care um, which tax it is. Once an individual has to make payment of four or five or six taxes, the taxes are too many. So as much as possible, you should try and either group the taxes together or limit the number of payments. It's easier to collect two tax types of 10 Naira than to collect five tax types of to Naira each. One of the sessions that struck the mindset of these tested tax experts significantly is this panel repositioning the matter of accelerating investment in Africa. The team highlighted those factors that make or hamper Africa as the last investment frontier. The factors include political risks, macroeconomic stability, good governance, and favorable business climate.
Here is Mrs. Ifueko Moigui Okaru, a former chairperson, FIRS, and now a managing partner, Compliance Professionals, PLC. I'd like to deviate a little bit from just talking about foreign direct investment to so also actually talking about domestic, local investment. Because I truly believe that if we can get we ourselves in our countries investing in our own countries, it makes it a lot easier to attract foreign direct investment. Interestingly, I really haven't seen that much of tracking on domestic investments as we've seen on foreign direct investments. So I think, first of all, we need to put it as a top priority. Now, the second thing is I find, and, 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 and I say this, I, I, I'm also talking from the point of being the chairman of the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund and trying to see how people can come and help fund you know, investment opportunities because we are also in the business of you know, providing funds for, for businesses. Value added tax that is administered in 44 of the 54 African countries and is seen as the tax of the future and therefore needs review of processes for effectiveness and efficiency in its administrations. That fraud and other forms of leakages have negative impacts on tax system in many African countries. The effects of fraud go beyond the obvious loss of tax revenues. The exact level of that fraud and the corresponding revenue loss is by its own nature difficult to estimate. Therefore, how can African countries address VAT leakages and their impact on tax system? Mr. Biodo Aino, FIRS Nigeria. We try to check the statistics for instance. The level of VAT filers in Nigeria as we speak is clearly below 70,000. That is in the population of give or take 160, 170 million people. Register company in the database in the of 1 million. And yet, we can boast of 100,000 tax filers that file for VAT on an annual basis. So, this is about the magnitude of the leakage that we are experiencing in Nigeria. It is a major problem, and then we're trying to see how this can be resolved. Um, I experience that when we saw this, and like many commissioners have said today, we try to deepen the tax base, and the data is a major issue. You need to know who indeed you really want to tax. How do we get government to understand that that collection and that enforcement cannot be a revenue authority responsibility alone? Government departments need to start working together to ensure greater compliance. For me, I think the biggest challenge that is opening us to all this fraud is one, we are not giving the refunds, we don't have the capacity to audit, we are not using the information that VAT can provide. There are so many sources of, uh, of information and data that we can access, that we can use to manage and administer VAT and get the advantages that we can. In line with its strategic objective of developing a sustainable member-oriented African organization on tax matters, as well as fostering efficient and effective African tax administration, ATAV has delivered far-reaching initiatives across the African continent. These quests for technical assistance initiatives have now instituted a potent force for a better tax future. My question is, from the various these calls, what would you say are the quick wins for today? Thank you very much. Um, I think the quick win generally is focused on incentive. One of the things that was said that we are quick at giving incentive to Leo Asitua foreign direct investment into the continent of Africa. But we have since discovered that we don't necessarily need to give this incentives for them to come. Because what they look at when they want to come into our continent are things like the governance in the system, the security, infrastructure, scheme, manpower. Those are the key things. I think uh, what ATAF is doing is just taking a clue from what Nigeria has been doing other than joint task board, where you have various task authorities come together to share their experiences and do peer review and come up with new initiative and implementation strategies was ensuring that we are able to deliver on our core mandate 
or building a task friendly environment. Finally, it is a natural fact that everything which has a beginning must have an end. Therefore, the week long conference of ATAF in Nigeria is simply described as a huge success that remains unforgettable in the minds of all. We've spoken a lot, I believe we've learnt a lot. But one thing is clear and one thing is certain is that going forward, our respective nations, countries expect us to fund them. Africa expects us to fund Africa. Not because we want to be totally isolated or independent in quotes of everybody else, but it's just the right thing to do. Africa as a continent has been blessed. Africa has been described as a continent of milk and honey. Some people might say some other place has been, but I believe Africa has. There is no raw material, no natural resource that you can't find in Africa. But we've been told that we should stop relying on selling our land in quotes, whatever we take from the ground. That we should sit up, work, and make people contribute into the commonwealth. Those who have found Africa as a place where they can come up and make a good living, make profits, but now telling them that they should give back and pay their taxes. It's a huge value in investing in ourselves, investing in our systems, and believing in our people. What we need is for governments to use that additional revenue for the upliftment and development of African people so that taxpayers can see the value of what their money gives, because when they see that, taxpayers will increasingly contribute to the fiscus of their nations. In addition to the memorable gala night, lavishly displayed exclusively for the African tax masters, the hosts, always led by Mr. Tunde Fowler, also packaged a tour to some attractive sites in Abuja. Abuja, a beautiful city with both natural and man-made tourism attractions. Ushafa Poultry Center is one of their visited places. But before Ushafa, a quick stopover was made at the Abuja Arts and Craft Village, where a culture, arts and tourism baron, Dr. Otumba Runshawe, was readily on ground to receive and entertain Nigeria's special guests. Located on the northern axis of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, lies the ancient village of Ushafa in Buari Area Council. Ushafa is a small settlement found in the midst of a beautiful array of interlocking hills surrounded by lush green vegetation, just about 40 kilometers from Abuja city center. Ushafa village, also called Bill Clinton Village, came into limelight when a former United States President, Bill Clinton, paid a historic visit to the village. Located in the heart of the village as a tourist attraction is Ushafa Poultry Center. The village is blessed with resources, including a heritage of fine pottery. Since Clinton's visit, notable world leaders like former President of Egypt, Hosni Mubarak, and former Swiss Vice President, Ruth Metzer, have come calling during official visits to Nigeria. The United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Director of UN Women, Michelle Bachelet, also visited the center, drumming up support for policies that would empower women. 